science, the supernatural, biblical prophecy, global events that threaten to rattle the very foundation of human existence. Critical examinations of the most important issues facing today's modern world. Welcome to the Sharpening Report. And now, your host, Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to the Sharpening Report. I am your host, Josh Peck. Tonight we have a very special first-time guest, John Smith, though you might uh, you might know him as White Rabbit on YouTube. He is best known for his videos, The Mark of the Beast, The Greatest Lie Ever Told, The Genesis Theory, as well as his Illuminati Super Bowl videos and other occult symbolism breakdown videos covering various forms of media and entertainment. Uh, It's sure to be a fascinating discussion. Now, if this is your first time to the Sharpening Report, welcome. Uh, We're glad that you're joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get access to all past episodes of the Sharpening Report, plus new ones done uh, done about every week or so. Uh, You'll also find a lot of other videos on my channel relating to end times, prophecy, the Bible, quantum physics, geopolitics, and uh, lots of other informative and fascinating topics. Uh, For those who do prefer the audio-only podcast version, we do still offer that through Blog Talk Radio and iTunes. You can go to sharpeningreport.com for more information. Also, if you are listening to the podcast, all of our uh, podcast episodes are actually audio taken from video interviews. So if you would like to watch the full video interviews, subscribe to youtube.com slash Josh Peck Disclosure for full access to every episode of The Sharpening Report and more. So all that being said, without further ado, I'd love to welcome John Smith to the show. John, how are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know we talked about the uh, doing this a few months ago. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to set it up and, and finally do it. Uh, now, j- just for the audience, because they might, you know, usually when we do a video interview, they can see the other person. Uh, but just so the audience doesn't think there's something wrong with the computer, we're just using a, a screen cap uh, for you and a, a, a different a, a name that's not yours and you know all, all, all of this stuff so uh, it, it's not a problem on the audience side it's just that's how we're we're doing this one um, now for those who might not be familiar could you give us a, a rundown of your testimony how you came to know Jesus and how that led to what you do today sure yeah um, well I guess people will probably know me from my YouTube channel white rabbit I've been making videos for a couple years now um, but kind of my testimony is is pretty pretty crazy, I guess you would say. I was I was born and raised Catholic, um, brought up in a Catholic household. My mom used to sing at you know at church. She was the lead cantor, um, and so yeah, I was I have a very Catholic family. And over the years, I just kind of started seeing faults within the Catholic religion and and having some questions, unanswered questions, seeing some problems little bit of hypocrisy and and over time I slowly started uh, verging further and further away from the Catholic and Christian faith in general. Um, By the time I was in high school or so I I became an atheist. I was a full-fledged atheist um, and I kind of carried out that that mindset for many years. Uh, And then in college I, I started you know, drinking a lot and actually started seeing things that I couldn't really explain, you know, like a supernatural type phenomenon, if you will. And so I couldn't really be an atheist anymore seeing that stuff. So I kind of moved more into the realm of agnostic or, you know, not really being sure. So within my college years, I actually became an alcoholic and I, I got really, really uh, into alcohol, and it eventually morphed into drug abuse. And so I was kind of spiraling out of control. I mean, I, I basically dropped out of college, lost my job, you know, was practically homeless. I, I mean, it was it was bad news bears. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I kind of hit my breaking point and said a little prayer and, you know, God answered the prayer. Wouldn't you know it? And my life started turning around. I, I met my beautiful wife, and you know, I, uh, I, I just I got better. I guess you would say. And then over time, you know, my 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 faith strengthened as my you know 
addiction subsided. And I remember one day I stumbled upon conspiracy theories and started looking into, you know, 9-11 and JFK and all this stuff, right? And so I thought I was losing my mind. I really did. I thought I, it was a byproduct of all the drug abuse that I was doing in the past. And so I was, I was really kind of freaking out. You know, when you start diving into this stuff, you know, it can be really overwhelming. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, I didn't know what to think. I, I honestly thought I was going crazy. So I remember I was sitting out in a parking lot one day, sitting in my car, and I said a little prayer. You know, again, I was, I was like, I said, God, am I losing my mind here? You know, what, like, what's going on? And I heard, I guess you couldn't really describe it as, a, as I heard it. I, it was more like I felt it. I felt a response. And I'll never forget what the response said. And the response essentially said, you're on the right path. You're on the right track. And it shook me to my core. You know, it was like, essentially a, a response from God. And it was so powerful to me, especially because it hit so many different levels. Okay. It, it meant that I was on the right track when it came to my addiction. You know, I was, I was on the right track in that, in the, in that regard. I was on the right track in terms of my relationship status. You know, the woman who became my wife. I was on the right track with my research and all this, these new things that I was uncovering. So it was a very, you know, it, it really uh, kind of brought me back down to reality and, and was a real humbling experience and really met, made me feel, you know, uh, assured, I guess would be the right word to say it. And it, it was incredible. Since then, you know, my faith just continues to grow day by day. Uh, I eventually started up this channel. I started out with, uh, I started out watching a lot of uh, stuff about hoaxes and like false flag uh, events and and school shootings and things like that and looking into kind of how, how the media is pushing this new world order narrative. And I saw some guys that were breaking down news events and, and exposing them for being hoaxes. And I was like, you know what, I, I could do that. So that's kind of how I got my start. And then almost instantly, I stumbled upon Ken Hovind's material and evolution versus creationism. And quickly, my channel kind of took a left turn, you know, or a right turn or an upward turn or however you want to phrase it. <laughs> and I, you know, the channel that I started initially to be strictly about conspiracy and like, you know, kind of edgy topics like that, essentially overnight became uh, with a Christian bent to it, I guess you would say. And it's kind of gradually become more and more, you know, I've, I've become more and more known as a Christian YouTuber, even though that's not necessarily what I was ever sought out to, to do. And it's even something that I've kind of tried to avoid as much as I could because, you know, I always have this paranoia about giving people bad information when it comes to scripture. It's a, actually a really big fear of mine. So I, I try to have all my ducks in a row before I talk about things when it comes to scripture or I try to make it very, very clear that I'm not, you know, the end all be all authority on this by any means, you know. So, but yeah, my, my channel just kind of morphed in that direction you know, I've, I've had a lot of success with the channel. I've worked with countless truthers on, on YouTube. Um, I've had some good times, some bad times, and kind of everything in, in between. So, yeah, I mean, that that's that's kind of my testimony. And, I, you know, at the end of the day, I just feel honored to, you know, work with great guys like you and then also help so many people. My, my favorite thing is probably getting feedback back from my audience and, and, and people telling me that, you know, they benefited from one of my videos in some way or or something like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, same here. That that's uh, that's a big plus for me as well. Um, yeah, I, I think that's wise to uh, you know when you put information out, especially with uh, you know biblical things that that 
and this this is something that I appreciate about how you present your information too. That that you're not the you know, you, you don't have the corner on truth or anything like that. And that, that's how I try to, that's how I try to handle myself as well. Like I, I use a lot of like, I think, or uh, this could be, or maybe it's the, you know, I do a lot of that kind of stuff. I, I very rarely will ever be super definite on a position. I mean, occasionally, you know, like who the savior is and stuff like that, I will. But, uh, <laughs> but with stuff like, um, you know, when the rapture is going to happen or, you, you know, stuff like that, that some people might want to get all up in arms about i i just i just don't i'm like well i guess it'll happen when it does but uh <laughs> but uh so that that that's good and i you know i appreciate a lot in your testimony too because there's a lot that i can personally relate to i'm not going to go through the whole my whole deal because i've done it a million times on the show already but uh you know i've i've also come out of um actually this this is something that most people don't know i i had a a brief period in my childhood where I was Catholic for a little while. Uh, what happened there was I, I, I was born and raised, you know, traditional Baptist, but my, my parents got a divorce and then my mom was uh, uh, dating and actually I think engaged uh, at one point to this guy who was a Catholic. So a lot of times we would go to Catholic Mass and it, just, it, it got to the point where he wanted us to convert, otherwise... It just wasn't going to work, so they broke up. But, yeah, for, uh, for I think, a couple of years, uh, it might even have been as long as that, um, I was, uh, I at least went to Catholic Mass. I don't know if that make, if that would have made me a Catholic at the time or not, but uh, I didn't really, I, I, I noticed a lot of the same things you did, a lot of hypocrisy, even, even the little things like they would say you can't really trust the Bible or certain versions of the Bible, yet they would quote those same versions in their pamphlets and things, so... There was a lot of little stuff like that, but uh, so, um, but I all I also fell away from the church for a while. Uh, instead of atheism for me, it was New Age theology. I got really into that and about destroyed my life over it. Um, but uh, a big part of my testimony as well was was Kent Hovind. Somebody from a church ended up uh, giving me, and this was before I heard of anything of like the the kind of stuff I'm researching now. But somebody gave me a DVD set of all of his stuff. Uh, and this was after he was already in prison, so um, I, I went into it knowing that that whole aspect of it. But I loved the videos, and they they really meant a lot to me. They still do, and uh, it really helped shape what what God was gonna do with me in the future. So, you know that that's that's really cool. I think that there's a, a lot in there uh, from your testimony that people can relate to. Um, so I gotta ask, what's what the name White Rabbit? What, where does that come from? Ah, well, <laughs> um, like I said, when I started my channel, I was kind of gearing more towards the conspiratorial side of things, you know. And I was also watching a lot of guys going through a lot of false flag stuff and, and exposing hoaxes. And one of the YouTubers that I watched the most went by the name of Red Pill. And Red Pill act and I actually formed a friendship after I started my channel and then had a falling out, but that's all that's a whole nother story. But anyway, that that's kind of the theme of where I was where I was headed with when I was brainstorming a, a name for my channel because his name derived from The Matrix. Right. The movie The Matrix and he also showed a lot of Matrix scenes in his videos and things. And I thought, you know, that's really cool. I would I would like to, you know, kind of do the same sort of thing and also kind of give a little tip of the hat to him for kind of, you know, inspiring me to start this channel. So I was brainstorming one day and my wife was sitting there and, and at the time she had this little rabbit, this little bunny, and she, she called it Bunny Foo Foo. And I'm sitting there trying to brainstorm with her and I'm saying, I'd, I'd like something that has to do with the Matrix, you know, yada, yada, yada. And she said, you should call it White Rabbit. And I said, that is brilliant. And a as they say, the rest is history. Well, you know, I've, I've later come to learn that there's a lot of other connotations with a white rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm kind of a little bit stubborn in that regard. I kind of, you know, when you look at scripture and, and you see things like the comparisons between God, Yahuwah, and Baal, for example, Yahweh and, ba and Baal, and how scripture a lot of times takes it and kind of intentionally 
uh, taunts other forms of religion during that day by saying, you know, like for example, the comparisons between Yahweh riding on the clouds and Baal riding on the clouds, you know, because at the time everyone would have recognized the God who rides on the clouds as Baal, but you know, the Bible is essentially saying, no, no, you know, it's it's Yahweh. So in in that kind of a thought process. I like the uh, the idea that everything is God's and everything can be used to glorify God, you know. And I think it's a sp- I, I I look at it as kind of an extra slap in the face to Satan when I use something that's his to glorify God. Amen. Yeah, yeah that that's that's awesome. You know, the first that I heard about that was uh, from the the work of Dr. Michael Heiser he talked about that and actually he was just in the uh in the studio uh for for those in the audience who might not be familiar I work for well not really for maybe with would be a better word I work with Skywatch TV I'm a part of their team so I'm actually recording from uh from the the, the studio right now uh, but he he the past couple of days Dr. Michael Heiser was in the studio and we recorded I th- we recorded ten programs it was a marathon um, but uh, but yeah that was that was something that that he has talked about too and it's uh it, it's really cool when you when you have that and then you look in the Bible and and can actually see how that plays out uh, so but yeah I, I'm I, I'm with you I agree I remember um, back when uh, the uh, the whole Pennock work thing was just discovered, and I, I was getting messages asking if it was something satanic, um, you know, because Pennock work, you know, pentagram and all, all that stuff, when CERN or, uh, you know, had, had discovered this thing, or, or actually, I don't remember if that was specifically a CERN, an LHC discovery, but, but anyway, um, I had, there were people concerned about that and asking if it was something satanic. So I wrote an article and did a video and basically said, no, because ultimately God was the one that created it. The only thing Satan can do is take what's already God's and try to twist the meaning into something else. Um, Yeah. And uh, I mean, you you could look at like the, um, the evergreen tree, you know, it it never dies. It symbolizes, to me, I would think it symbolizes eternal life, you know, Jesus and and the gift of salvation, the eternal life that we're, um, that we're promised. Although in ancient history, the enemy has taken that and really twisted it into some, some just God awful ways. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the only thing that the enemy could do. He can't create anything of his own. He's never had an original thought of his own. He just twists what's already there. Uh, so I, I completely agree with you on there. I think White Rabbit's an awesome, awesome name. Um, so it's t- tell us about some of your uh, your previous videos, the, the, the research that you put in and, and the impact that they've had on the Christian community. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably one of the first major undertakings I did. Well, what I actually, let me back up a little bit. One of the first videos I did that I kind of considered to be my first, you know, staking my claim as, as like an actual video maker and not just some guy rambling on the internet was paying tribute to Bill Cooper, who was a conspiracy theorist back in the day. Um, and I did a whole video about who killed JFK. And what I did in that video was I went through a bunch of the symbolism and uh, basically all of the symbolism surrounding Dealey Plaza. And at the time, I actually lived in Dallas, so it wasn't too far of a drive for me. So I actually got some of my own footage of Dealey Plaza and walked through it and everything. And I added a little bit to it, but it was mostly just a rehashing of mostly just his information as well as, you know... um, fact checking there were a couple things that I had to leave out that he had actually made a mistake on in his original lecture but all in all you know that that was kind of what I considered to be my first breakout type of video from there you know right before then you know I mentioned I had been getting into creation versus evolution and what I had actually done is taken a couple clips from uh, Ken Hovind lecture and uploaded that and I realized that I was getting a ton of messages on that video, which was weird because at the time, you know, I I only had you know 50 subscribers, if that. Oh wow! Yeah, and and that video, you know, was getting 300 views and and on and on and on and on, you know. And so I was like, maybe you know, I should do something, make make a follow up video, something that's a little bit in my own words type of thing. And so, and actually, let me let me pull up here real quick, just sure. 
to make sure I'm in the right uh, chronological order here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I forget all the all the videos I've made here. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I have I have a couple hundred or maybe a few hundred videos on mine now, and uh, I remember when I I have over a hundred sharpening report episodes. When I first started the sharpening report, um, I didn't really have any problem remembering the numbers and you know the guests and what every episode was up until about episode six. Then I started forgetting. <laughs> so so uh, so take your time. That's not a problem at all. I totally uh, I, I can totally relate. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I guess uh, the my creation versus evolution video uh, I, I put up significantly before I did the JFK video, but JFK was really the the first video where I you know like I said I I was kind of making my myself known as as a video creator. It was my, what I considered to be my first real work, you know. Yeah. So um, in the following months, you know, I continued making videos. And I took on a couple major symbolism kind of expose type videos. I did a one about Saturn Symbolism 101, which I have actually taken down since because of some errors in it. And I did a full hour long video about the symbolism in the Transformers videos uh, or the Transformers movies. And that was that was kind of an intense video for me because I, I went through, a ton of scenes in that in that series of movies and really talked about all the occult symbolism hidden in every scene and stuff but then I really started to take on the evolution topic again and I made a video called the greatest lie ever told and that was really kind of a, a, a groundbreaking video for me that's that's what really kind of you know, uh, got my channel out there the most and it initially, especially to Christian audiences. Um, and in the greatest lie ever told, you know, I, I went through evolution and basically what I was describing in that video was why evolution is a belief and not an actual science, or at least why it's why it's more of a belief than a than a science. And it was kind of interesting because. During that time, you know, I was still relatively new to the, uh, you know, creationism topic. And even when I made that video, I was still only like 75% sure type of thing. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I still wanted to get it all out there. And, and it, you know, I got raving reviews from it. People seemed to really enjoy it. And it kind of quickly became something I was known for. Um. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. It was uh, <laughs> oh, just talking about some of your previous videos, the research that you put in, and the uh, the impact that they've had on the on the Christian community. You, you've said before that you've gotten some uh, uh, good reviews and testimonies from people saying that that uh, your videos have helped them out. That's that's really cool. Yeah, probably that the greatest lie ever told video. You know, I got a ton of positive feedback from that one. A lot of testimonies from people who were saying that they were like atheists before or, you know, they, they had their doubts and things like that. And they saw that video and it really kind of helped them. And, and I've had other people who have said that they've showed it to like their science teachers and uh, other family members and things like that. So that, w that was really cool for, for me. And that was probably kind of my first real experience with that I guess I did have some videos where people said that in the before that but that was that was you know a, a major uh, milestone I got I got a lot of messages back from that one um, and it's kind of funny because today looking back on the video I think that video is a little bit weak <laughs> <laughs> um, I think some of my arguments in that video were kind of easy to uh, retort or, you know, easy to uh, counter, sure. but, and, and I actually have plans to make a, a new video talking about evolution, but I'm, I think I'm going to attack it from a different angle uh, moving forward. Um, you know, my, my beliefs on that topic have kind of morphed over time, uh, largely actually in part due to Michael Heiser's work. Um, when he goes through through Genesis, and I kind of find it 
fascinating because I'm kind of in, in a point now where I still absolutely think that evolution is wrong. I think it's kind of dumb, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> um, but I also don't necessarily hold the position of a creationist. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm a lot more fluid in my interpretation. I don't think scripture is meant to be taken scientifically. I think it is a theological book. Having said that, I do think that there are some interesting things that you can derive from the text um, that give great insight into the actual physical world, not just, you know, the non-physical realm. So, not even though it's a theological book, it still contains all truth, in my opinion, and even though it may not have a lot of specificity in terms of, you know, how everything got started, it does plant some seeds and gives some pretty good hints, I think. So, with that in mind, I kind of started taking on uh, a, a video that I called the Genesis Theory. And in the Genesis Theory, I have part one and part two. The first part is three hours long. The second part is almost five hours long. And it's a compilation of a ton of different clips of a lot of information that most people have never been exposed to. And I covered a lot of thing in a lot of things in that series with the intent of getting into my perspective of the Genesis theory of of how everything came to be, how creation started. Um, and what I was doing was taking from some sciences that are less well known, like plasma cosmology and things like that, the electric universe model stuff along those lines, and using that in conjunction with not only scripture and the book of Genesis, but also other mythological texts from ancient times. And, you know, I was seeing a lot of common themes throughout a lot of these texts, and so that was kind of the direction that I was going with it. And I ended up suspending that uh, that series after the second part because... It's such a massive topic that I really felt like I needed to do more research, and I also felt like I needed to plan it out a little bit better. Um, and then, obviously, the whole flat Earth thing came about, and so I kind of <laughs> decided to just suspend that yeah. <laughs> until the I, foreseeable future. Because one of the things that I talked about in that in part one was about the geocentric model. Right. And even though I wasn't saying that the Earth is definitely in the center of the universe, I was saying... Essentially, it's you know something to keep in mind as we move forward with this series type of thing. Although I don't think that kind of my thought process with the book of Genesis uh, hinders at all with the heliocentric versus the geocentric model. Um, you know, I, I I did address it in in the in the video. I did expose the audience to that, and I, I feel like if if I you know, this close to the whole flat earth thing, it, it's best just to kind of avoid that for now. Yeah, I don't blame you at all there. It's gotten, uh, it's gotten vicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, getting off the flat earth thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get no arguments from me. <laughs> well, you, you also did a, uh, a, a video on the Mark of the Beast, too, and that, that one uh, that one got really popular as well. Yeah, that was one of my most recent ones. That was kind of another milestone with my channel. I uh, Right before I made that video, I was looking back through some of my previous videos, and I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, I could do better than this. I, I, I kind of felt like my videos were a little stale, to be honest. Mm-hmm. My own worst critic. <laughs> <laughs> And I wanted to do something that was really, you know, incredible. I wanted to, you know, leave a legacy, if you will. Yeah. And so I took on, I well, first I, I asked my subscribers what topic they would like me to cover. And I gave, I think it was four options. I said I could cover UFOs, I could cover the Market Beast, the Rapture, or I forget what the last one was. And overwhelmingly people wanted me to cover the mark of the beast and so I spent essentially four months I think it was working on this video uh, and and do, doing all the research and and editing and everything it took me an 
I, I mean, I probably spent 400 plus hours making that video. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I think it really, really turned out great. It was, it was kind of interesting too, because I start the first half of the video has a different feel than the second half. And the reason is because the first half of the video, I was moving in a certain direction with the video. And through my research, I drew a different conclusion. And in the second half of the video, I kind of resolved that conclusion. Um, and I left it that way intentionally because I kind of honestly felt like it was a more organic feel to the video anyway. And yeah, it's I, it's something that I, I think most of my audience wasn't expecting but was uh, excited about. You know, I wanted to make... Uh, a video that was heavily based on scripture that was also extremely entertaining to watch. Something that people could really sink their teeth into, even if they weren't as advanced in scripture as most people would probably need to be to be handling the type of information that I go through in that video. So that one got really good reviews and I was really happy with that. And kind of since then, I've, I've been really trying to take my videos to the next level in terms of quality and production value and things like that. Uh, I have a second channel called Black Rabbit where I upload more consistently um, for, for my subs who, who like more consistent you know, videos and are willing to sacrifice quality for that. But I've kind of taken the position on my main channel that all of my videos are going to be as high quality as I could possibly do. And, you know, it, it, it's really kind of, again, just kind of taking my channel to that next level. I, right after the Mark of the Beast, I had a big hit with the Illuminati Super Bowl halftime show video. Um, yeah. That one really took off over a million views. And then I had two separate viral hits right after it. I had... Um, a more specific video about the 2016 Super Bowl, and then I did another video on the Grammys, and all three of those videos, right in a row, boom, 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 went viral. So I had a lot of success in that regard, and my channel has kind of skyrocketed since then. And uh, onward and upward we go. <laughs> Amen. That's really cool. And and of course, I would suggest any uh, subscriber of mine, anybody who's who's uh, watching this and is subscribed to me, go ahead and subscribe to, to White Rabbit because you, you, there are hours and hours of um, information but also entertainment. Not that entertainment's the main focus, of course, but who wants to sit through a boring video, you know, even if it is incredibly informative. And uh, So you, you, you won't find that on, uh, on White Rabbit's channel. You'll find uh, a lot of information, but that's also entertaining and, and engaging uh, to watch. You, you also get quite a few criticisms from atheists and other people who don't share some of your views. How do you deal with them, and how should we as Christians handle uh, bullies and trolls online? Wow. Uh, well, on on my second channel, Black Rabbit, I've actually started a new kind of series called Arguing with Atheists. Um, because I come from, like I said, I, like I used to be an atheist, so... I know exactly how atheists think. I know the reasoning behind their arguments. You know, I know where they're coming from. And so in that regard, I've I've kind of found that I'm quite effective at uh, bringing rebuttals to atheists when they object to certain topics I cover. Um, and so I kind of wanted to share that with my audience and give them insight. You know, there's, there's all kinds of... Uh, apologetics that people can find on the internet. The internet's full of that stuff. Um, and I wanted to approach it from a slightly different angle. I wanted to approach it from more of a uh, this is how an atheist thinks type of perspective. I wanted to go through how it thinks, how they think, the, the reasoning behind their arguments, and kind of how you should go about arguing with an atheist or discussing with an atheist or, or, or whatever. Um, so it's less about actually what you say and more about how you say it because the internet's filled with what to say but I've found that a lot of people approach it the wrong way they try and force feed it to the person that they're you know in conflict with they you know they, they try and bombard the person with uh, Bible passages and things like that and 
in my experience, that's not the way you do it at all. First, you gotta you gotta figure out the reasoning behind what it is that they're saying. You gotta realize every everybody has their own set of circumstances, their own life experiences that have morphed their views over years and years and years. And you know, take for example, uh, if if an atheist thinks that all Christians are non credible, and a Christian comes quoting a bunch of Christian stuff, the atheist is still, within their perspective, going to view everything that Christian says as non credible. Right. So, what you really have to do is argue with them on their ground and show them that their reasoning is faulty using terminology and 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 th- and that's just kind of one example of of what I'm going through in that in in that new series uh as far as like shills and trolls and things um you know when I first started my channel I was kind of a sensitive guy when I came to the comments section I took negative comments very very personally me too <laughs> yeah. and you know I, I, I learned pretty quickly that I, I had to grow, grow some thick skin. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was tough. It was tough for, for a long time, you know. Um, and not, not to bring it up again, but the flat earth thing kind of shook me to my core in terms of how I viewed the comments section in my videos. Yeah, same here. And something just clicked. Some, something, something in my head just clicked. And, and I realized, you know, you you can't control what people say, mm-hmm. you know. You, you're never going to please everybody 100 percent of the time, and a lot of people just like causing chaos, you know. And there's all kinds of different factors to it, and for whatever reason, I I just got over it almost overnight. And, yeah. And through that, I realized the most effective way to handle trolls and shills and and uh, criticism and things like that is to feed it no attention whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the times, these people want attention. They want you know, to, to kind of drain your energy, if you will. And if you don't, if you just ignore it, it fizzles out. It goes away. And so I would highly recommend that if anybody's starting a YouTube channel or, or, is, or is struggling with this in, in some regard, just ignore it. They will move on to easier targets if you will and the kind of the second tier of that is if you do want to address it you need to stay extremely lighthearted about it and almost kind of jokey about it you know I've, I've kind of made some spoof videos um, in regards to some of the you know uh, attacks in the comments section that I've received and I think that's really the best approach because nobody wants you to get on camera and, and, and start you know complaining about people being mean to you you know, uh, that that might work for a video or two, but it kind of gets old to your audience pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I I wholeheartedly agree with that, and that that it, it's so funny because that's really similar to uh, my experience. I actually shut the comments off of my videos for a, a while because, um, you know, when I was first uh, starting to grow my channel and getting a lot of uh, a lot, you know, a lot more exposure that I wasn't used to, and uh, also getting a lot more comments that I wasn't used to. I used to be really sensitive about it too, and it got to the point that I was like, you know, this isn't edifying. What, what is, what is even? What's the point? I turned off, and it was, it was actually after a, a flat Earth video. I did an interview with somebody who uh, wanted to talk about the flat Earth theology, and so we talked about it. it the interview itself, I thought, went relatively well. Um, you know, just for the record, I'm I'm a round earth, heliocentric. You know, just that that's that's what I am. That's what I believe. Um, and other people believe different things. That's fine. But uh, it, it, and again, like you said, it wasn't so much what they were saying; it was how they were saying it. Uh, you know, when I when I start hearing a bunch of things like, "Well, you you don't believe in God, or you don't take the Bible seriously if you don't believe the Earth is flat," it's like. What's even the point of keeping the comments on for something like that? So for a while, I uh, I, sh- I I turned off comments on all my videos. Um, I have since turned them back on. Uh, I I got I and like you, it was almost overnight. I got over that and realized, you know, I I always have if if somebody's 
being blasphemous or or swearing because I do I do have kids that watch my uh, YouTube channel and I don't want I don't want them to have to read a bunch of FUs and you know all that stuff. Um, I, I have the option I can just delete the comment. You know I don't have to address them. I don't have to say anything. And like you, I found that that is the absolute best approach. Don't don't give them any attention. Uh, if they take the time to write like five paragraphs of something and then you just delete it <laughs> they're not going to want to write anymore <laughs> on your channel because they're not going to want to put all that work in for for nothing for no reaction they'll move on like you said so i found that to be true and uh uh, but and also I agree that you know nobody wants to hear uh, someone who has a channel get get on and and complain about their subscribers or complain about their comments. So you do have to be kind of lighthearted about it, because uh, you know sometimes I'll get comments about you know because I put ads in in my videos and stuff like that. And not everybody likes that, but you know the way I figure it, it it helps it helps the sharpening report as a ministry grow financially and it costs nothing for the viewer they still have the option to skip the ad and i mean i know ads are annoying i'm annoyed by them i don't i don't like that we live in a world where you have to advertise stuff 24 7 and you're constantly bombarded with it but you know it's the world we live in and just, that's just kind of how it works so um in in order to help grow the ministry and stuff like that i, I do things like that but uh but and and you know, of course, every now and then I'll get somebody that'll leave a totally non-understanding, you know, comment that that'll blast me for that. And what I've realized is, uh, you're never going to change anyone's mind. No, they, they, if they're taking the time to to uh, just be a bully or a troll about it, they don't care what you have to say about it. They just want to fight. So I just block them and delete the comment now. <laughs> and uh, mo most most people who come onto my channel understand that whole end of it. And I, I my my true subscribers, the people that actually subscribe to me because they want the content I put out, uh, they're awesome. And I, I I love all my subscribers, and uh, it and it's it, it's great. Um, so I, I I totally back up everything that that you're saying with that on how to handle people like that. Um, I wanted to ask too. You have some. Uh, we we talked a little bit about evolution. You have some interesting views on scripture concerning uh, evolution, but also Satan and stars, uh, which is which is fascinating stuff. What what, what can you tell us about uh, those things in particular? <clears throat> well, as far as the whole uh, Satan thing, this is something that I've kind of been looking into recently. I might approach a video in the probably distant future about it, but I was I was kind of you know. The word Satan comes from Hasatan, which means the Satan. Um, so it's not a definitive name. Mm -hmm. And all throughout Scripture, we see, you know, like if you're familiar with Michael Heiser's work, he talks about how, uh, you know, the divine counsel type topic and how um, during Babel, for example, God turned over all these other nations to lesser gods, right? Yes. Yep. Deuteronomy 32 8. Right. And so there's there's all kinds of of these you know entities out there, if you will, um, and so you know you have you have Lucifer, you have uh, Leviathan, you have Baal, you have you know, and, and then it, yeah, if you go through all the different gods mentioned um, in terms of who the people were actually worshiping back in the day, you know you, you come across a lot of different names in scripture for all these different entities. Um, and I think a lot of people try and, or a lot of people have this image where it's Satan versus God, or Lucifer versus God, you know? And I don't really see it that way anymore. I think the adversary, or the Satan, is more of a, a spiritual defiance against God. It's it's a, a quality or a trait that possesses certain entities or individuals. And yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I think there's a multitude of um, 
I can't think of the word. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I, I I think I understand what you're saying though, because that that actually makes sense and seems to be a common theme throughout Scripture. Such as uh, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is we know there's a spirit of Antichrist that anybody can have. You, you know, I mean, if you deny the Father and the Son, that's the spirit of Antichrist. But there's also uh, an end times figure that we commonly call the Antichrist, even though in the book of Revelation he's never called that. Uh, or really, I, really all throughout the Bible he's never called that. But but because he has the spirit of uh, of Antichrist. So it's, it, it, is it kind of like that same theme there with uh, with Hasatan? Right. Well, that's that's kind of what I'm looking into right now. So that that's kind of my, my view on that. Not necessarily one specific entity versus God. Um, because that's the other thing. That kind of makes it sound like Satan is, is even comparable to God. Right. You know, and that, that that's kind of something to scratch your head about. Um, but it would make a lot more sense if, if a third of the angels, you know, for example. And it's just kind of one of those things to ponder about. Yeah. But jumping over to the stars topic... This was this was something kind of interesting that I was looking into more towards the time I was researching the, for the Genesis theory, and I came across your book, um, Quantum Creation. Oh yeah, awesome! Right? Is that the name of it? It's been a yeah. long, long time since. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, Quantum Creation. Quantum Creation. Yeah, and you talked about dimensional unfolding and things, and in your perspective of of angels, correct? Mm-hmm. Was yep. that in that book? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I kind of started thinking about that in relation to stars. And, and I think I mentioned this to you in a, in a message on Facebook a while back. But, uh, you know, Scripture references stars a lot and draws comparison to um, angelic beings, if you will. Uh, and ancient civilizations all throughout history have done that. And there's all kinds of different perspectives that you can take as to why that is. You know, it has obviously a lot of pagan roots and things. Um, and I think Michael Heiser has done a lot of great work on this as well. But just like I was saying before, how the Bible contains all truth and that you can certainly derive a lot more from Scripture than just on a theological or historical level, um, there might be more to it than just you know stars being a representative of a specific entity um, or specific trade or what have you so I was thinking in terms of your dimensional unfolding um, concept that there may be certain aspects um, to this reality that we can't totally perceive yeah. With, with your dimensional unfolding, you were specifically referencing cherubim, correct? Mm -hmm. And how the cherubim had the head of a lion, eagle, man, and ox, is it? Yep. yep. And, um, and I thought that was really interesting, but I also kind of looked at it as though that was a stationary object. That was still one creature in one specific place. But if we're talking about multiple dimensions, then we can also be talking about multiple locations yeah. for singular being. And so I was kind of thinking in that frame, and then I was also, uh, in, in the Genesis theory, one of the things that I referenced was how uh, the sun is believed by some to actually be hollow and a type of portal, if you will, to another dimensionality, kind of like a black hole. Um, and that kind of got me thinking because maybe the essence of angels can be perceived in this reality through stars. Maybe stars are kind of like the essence of these angels peeking through into our reality. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like the Flatland example. If I stick my finger in Flatland, you know, Flatlanders are just going to see a circle. Um, now, how that would translate to us, we would see a sphere. So maybe, maybe stars are just the, you know, for lack of better words, the the piece of the angel that is actually in our in our dimension. And you bring up an interesting point too with. Uh, with, with the the cherubim that Ezekiel saw, and th this I talked about in in uh, 
cherubim chariots, but um, but how how you brought up the uh, the two or more in one place, and I didn't I didn't actually think of this until you just mentioned that in that passage Ezekiel says that the um, the spirits of the cherubim were in the wheels, and I never really understood. Like, is it two things, like sharing one spirit? I didn't really understand how that works. But if it is actually the wheels and the cherubim, the ophanim and the cherubim are actually two parts of one entity, that would explain why they share one spirit. Uh, so, I mean, that, that that's phenomenal. I never, I, I never thought about that before. <laughs> yeah, so that's just kind of something I was playing around with. I also have a whole thing about Genesis uh, regarding the Genesis theory and, and time dilation and things, but uh, I, I won't get into all that. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I think you and I are going to have to get together and make a video on this sometime or something. <laughs> that, that That's awesome. I honestly, I had never thought about, and I, I've been, I've been, uh, I remember when you and I had that big, long uh, Facebook, con or a uh, Facebook messenger conversation about all this stuff. And uh, I remember I was telling my wife, man, this, this guy's blowing my mind. This is, this is really awesome, um, but yeah, I never thought about, and I've always wondered what the deal with the the one spirit and the two beings, you know, the the, the cherubim and the the wheels, what the what, what the story behind that was, and it very well could be that it is just two parts of one extra dimensional being that you know we just to us it would look separate, just like if I stuck two fingers in Flatland, a Flatlander would see two circles that are separate, but it's actually part of one being man that that that's amazing uh what, what kind of things are you currently working on now Ooh. well i'm always working on multiple things at once like i said i'm working on the arguing with atheist series on my second channel um but as far as my main channel is concerned right now i'm actually working on a video about the movie pleasantville oh okay and it's it's kind of one of these videos that nobody asked me to make. Nobody necessarily wanted me to make. But I watched Pleasantville, and I was like, you know, I can use this video to make a point. And I get a lot of criticism from people saying that I'm reading too much into things um, when I'm doing a lot of breakdown and, and symbolism uh, for, for movies and other things in pop culture. And... The thing that was so interesting about this movie is, aside from the fact that it's so blatant and it's like a common theme throughout the movie, other critics picked up on similar themes that I point out in other regular movies. And so I'm kind of using it as an example to, sh to try and show people that there's, there's definitely ways, other, other ways to interpret movies. Um, you know, it, it, it's just cinematic theory you know which is a, a fundamental that you learn in film school all I'm doing is is approaching it with a different mindset and if you as make some of the same assumptions that I make going into it based on testimonies from insiders it really kinda makes a lot of sense so that's kinda the one I'm working on right now the second one that I'm most excited for is actually going to be my f kind of a follow-up to the Mark of the Beast video, though not really. Um, it's going to be in the same sort of vein, but it's it's going to be a completely different topic. Um, and it's actually going to be in regards to um, the Abyss, I guess would be the best way to describe it, and the spirits in the Abyss. Awesome. Yeah, you know, and uh, in that video I'm going to go through a lot of, you know, like an ancient Egyptian mythology and things like, and, and, and other mythologies that focus around their gods coming from, you know, underwater or the abyss and things like that, and then drawing the correlations that the Bible makes in regard to that. Like, for example, uh, when Jesus walked on water, he wasn't just walking on water he was sending a message. He was demonstrating his authority over all of these other entities that reside in the abyss. Mm -hmm. He was walking on top of them. You know? That's awesome. <laughs> you know, and then, and then you also have, like, jumping back to the book of Genesis, you have the spirit of, of God moved upon the face of the waters. So we have a correlation there as well. Um, and there's, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, of things along that line. And, uh, 
so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to kind of dive into that topic as well. That is really cool. Well, lot definitely lots to to look forward to uh, from your channel. Uh, you got some time for some uh, viewer questions? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, for the audience at home, if you would like the chance to send in questions to future guests, uh, you can do so at the Sharpening Report Facebook group. You can either just search for it on Facebook or you can go to sharpeningreport.com and uh, it's linked there. Uh, join the group and whenever we do one of these, I will pin a post about who the guest is, what the general topic is, and give you the chance to comment and, and leave questions. Usually I try to give at least a few days notice, but sometimes I'm forgetful like I was today and I gave people about an hour notice. So, uh, But luckily, uh, luckily we did have one viewer that, that saved me and, and actually sent in three really good questions. So uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into those. But that, that again is uh, the Sharpening Report Facebook group. Uh, join it on Facebook or go to sharpeningreport.com. All right, so a big thank you to Melissa who sent in uh, three really good questions. Um, the first one she wrote in, uh, I would like to ask him, what is his major motivation for being in slash doing the type of ministry that he is in? Uh, my motivation is truth. Above everything else, I hate being lied to. And I'm constantly pursuing the truth and, and, and trying to get not only the truth, but also I love learning and, and I want to get as much information as I can. I've also, I also really enjoy making videos, you know, it, it's, it's uh, kind of relaxing for me and, and, you know, I like being creative and, and messing around with editing software and things. So it's, it's just kind of a, a perfect uh, kind of match for me, I guess, I guess you would say. That's awesome. Yeah, I have similar interests as well, and it makes uh, I, I I do all the video editing uh, for all the all the Skywatch TV programs that go out. Uh, well, well, the main network program, and then of course into the multiverse and Skywatch Women. Uh, Derek Gilbert does Sci Friday and the daily updates. But yeah, I I, I love it, and it's all about uh, getting the truth out. I can definitely relate to that. Melissa also asks, what are some of the stories or testimonies he has or has heard from others about how his ministry that uh, really have blessed him? Can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she's basically asking, what have you... Uh, what, what are some stories or testimonies that you've heard from some of your uh, subscribers that... Um, you know that 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 have blessed you and, and encouraged you to to keep going. Like uh, how how your videos may have helped other people, or do you have any like uh, specific uh, testimonies that you've received from people? There are a couple that stand out to me, um, but probably the one that I am most fond of, I guess you would say, is. A testimony from a Serbian guy who stumbled upon one of my videos and he was actually a pagan and really kind of going down the wrong road and stumbled just so happened to stumble upon one of my videos and it I guess it just totally kind of gave him a whole new perspective on things I guess is how you would say it and you know, he he wrote me a real nice uh, kind of testimony as to how my video kind of helped him in that regard. And and right now, you know, I, I I'm still friends with him, and he's uh whew, he's he's he is an absolute phenomenal brother in Christ now. And you know, it's 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 stories like that that uh, are extremely humbling and 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 gratifying and and uh, yeah, really incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that that's what keeps me going too, and uh, especially when we get negative comments or something like that. I, I don't get as many of them now because I think people have kind of learned that I'm not gonna respond if they're gonna, you know, <laughs> send stuff like that. But um, but it is really encouraging. One one of my biggest ones uh, that I, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. I was uh, somebody uh, actually a 15 year old kid had had happened upon um, one of my earlier videos um 
and it was about uh, it was about suicide and hell. Does suicide lead to hell? You know, and it, the the video was just uh, trying to examine. Um, you know, is it just a clear cut case of if you kill yourself, you're going to hell or are there other factors like mental illness and how is all that handled scripturally? That, that's kind of what the video was about. And I guess that, uh, that inspired him to, to contact me on Facebook. Um, he had never heard anything like that and, and he was curious and he had a lot of questions, uh, really good questions too. And so we talked for a while and I found out that he wasn't a Christian and he actually asked, he asked me if I would pray with him so that, you know, to, to show him how to get, to lead him to the Lord, to show him how to get saved. And I said, absolutely. And this is all just through, you know, Facebook Messenger, <laughs> basically. Um, but so we, we, we prayed together. He, he accepted Jesus as a savior and we're still in contact. It's, uh, uh, let's see, almost two years now, I think, uh, since since uh, he first contacted me, but he's he he's a great brother in the Lord. He's he's really smart. He's a really good kid. Um, still full of questions, which is great. But uh, I, I I I'll remember that for the rest of my life. That that really that that was the the one thing that really stood out. That and especially on that video because I never thought when I was doing that video, I didn't even know if I wanted to do it. I didn't know if it was too controversial or if it would really help anybody or if it would just start people you know fighting or whatever but you know because of that i'm glad that i did that so that that that's really cool yeah so melissa has uh one last question she writes in uh are there any topics for in the future that he would like to get into future topics well i've kind of mentioned that a a couple videos in the works already but uh you know, I, I would like to approach the evolution topic again. Um, did I really, did I kind of get into where I was going with that? Yeah, I think so. You, you, you talked a little bit about how you wanted to, uh, well, you, you, you mentioned that you wanted to take it from a slightly different angle based more on uh, uh, things that Dr. Michael Heiser has, has, has put out there. I think that's about where you left off with the, with the, with, with that, but I, I'm not sure. Like, like, like specifically, what what kind of uh, direction would you like to take that? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, when I was first looking into the whole creationism thing with Ken Hovind stuff, it was kind of I, I viewed it a lot more black and white, um, and it was kind of like if you believe the Bible, then you believe in creationism, right? Um, and, and my views on that, like many things, has kind of changed over time um, based on new information and, and further research and, and things like that. And it's kind of funny because I'm at the point now where I don't – it doesn't really matter to me if evolution is true or not. To me, it doesn't affect my faith in Scripture in the slightest. Mm -hmm. It doesn't because Scripture is a theological book. It's not a science book. It was never intended to be a science book. And it's kind of comparing apples and oranges. It's, it's, there, there's really no point to it. The, only, the question then becomes, you know, why, why is it such a hot-button topic for atheists? Well, the answer is because it does matter to atheists. It matters to atheists a whole lot because it's what they hang their entire belief structure on it's not you know for a christian it, it shouldn't matter one way or the other because at the end of the day that's not even really what the what scripture is getting at the scripture right. is a theological construct it's saying yeah you know one way to view it is no matter how the earth came to be god's behind it exactly know? yes yep but f see an evolutionist or or i should say an atheist they have to explain things in a naturalistic, from a naturalistic viewpoint. They have to explain things without God. You see, as a Christian, we have the benefit of saying, you know, uh, God may have have let it just happen. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it doesn't hinder us at all, one way or the other. But you know, an atheist has to absolutely, definitively stake their claim on the fact that not only could it happen by itself, but that it did happen by itself. And it's something that you're never going to be able to prove one way or the other. 
and that is why evolution or that is why atheists cling to evolution so vehemently it's because without it they don't have a foot to stand on and so that's kind of the whole irony i think between evolution and verse creation if you will that's really not even the discussion that we should be having the discussion should be strictly on the validity of evolutionary theory and not how it pertains to creation because creation is just another perspective with just as many flaws you know just as many counter arguments and it's not just evolution versus creationism there's there's all kinds of other forms and all kinds of other theories and so to stake your you know your your whole belief structure on one thing and being completely unwilling to uh, listen to counter arguments is actually um, counterproductive to scientific adv advancement and theory. So that's kind of the approach that I was going to kind of take with that moving forward. I was, I was going to make it clear basically right off the bat that it's not, that I'm not against evolution because I'm a Christian. Actually, quite the contrary. Um, I just am against evolution because I, I see a lot of problems with it. A lot of things that can't be explained, a lot of things that are poorly explained. And, you know, that, that kind of also delves into uh, the, the problem with science in general nowadays, or, or at least so, theories in science. You know, when you, when you build on top of mathematics, you have an absolute from which you start. But the problem with science is when they build on top of science, the science that they're building on top of isn't necessarily an absolute. So what they end up doing is kind of spiraling towards a certain direction um, with a certain bias towards a certain perspective and really w without concrete evidence, all they're doing is building on top of other theories that may or may not be true, which creates more and more things that may or may not be true, but that all fit together nicely because they're all based on the same framework, which may or may not be true. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of a, uh, uh, I guess uh, I guess you could call it circular reasoning type of thing. You know, um, I think one of the funniest theories that has come out of academia as of late would be multiverse theory. Oh yeah, <laughs> because multiverse theory. I'm not saying it's true or it's not true or or whatever. I'm just saying that the sole reason is because they can't statistically claim that nothing became something. Yes. And, you know, the most, to me, the most absolutely ridiculous part of that, because there are some aspects of, you know, when they say a multiverse, that could or couldn't be true. You know, I mean, I, I my wife and I actually have a show on Skywatch TV that explores that question, and it's called Into the Multiverse. Uh, but one of the most, and I, I've said this on this show and on Into the Multiverse and in blogs, the most ridiculous uh, thing that is always thrown into mul the multiverse theory is infinity. <laughs> Just yeah. the just yeah. the idea of infinity it is so absurd and so it it's so easily disproven just by percentages. Um, for example, multiverse theory says that we exist in one of an infinite number of other universes. Okay, what percentage is that? How how do we exist at all then? You know, I mean, um, y you could have that that would have to mean that our universe is infinitely big because like, like what's one percent of infinity it's infinity what is uh point zero 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 one you know percent of infinity it's still infinity you can never reduce it down to just one universe if you're starting with an infinite number of universes uh same with how the universe it can't be infinitely old even though a lot of physicists and scientists say that it can't be infinitely large um and uh i mean there's all sorts of problems with that too because but it all comes back to the same thing well what percentage of infinity do we occupy in time or in space 
you can't exist in infinity and be be a a physical being otherwise you would be infinite yourself and clearly i'm not infinite you know i i have a limit to my size and my 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 age and uh so i mean even just by reason actually there was a a really uh important mathematician carl Friedrich gauss who said um that uh if i can remember the exact quote i think it's something along the lines of i protest the use of infinity in mathematics and and uh infinity is just a way of talking about basically he was saying that when it comes to math and and even science infinity is not allowed if your answer is infinity you've made a mistake and you got to go back to the drawing board but this whole idea of infinity is becoming more and more accepted because and i think that this is what it really comes down to it's attractive to atheists because or or physicists or whatever because it totally excludes god um you don't have to have a creator if you believe in infinity so while some scientists might say that we have a god of the gaps you know we 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 worship a god of the gaps anytime we come up against a problem that we can't answer oh god did it you know they have an infinity of the gaps problem. It's the it's the same problem. They're just using a different uh, different excuse. Uh, so I think that's kind of ironic. But I, I'm right there with you on, on on that multiverse stuff. I think some of it some of it could be true, but there's it's still got to be within the framework of uh, just logic and and <laughs> you know stuff that makes sense. But uh, I didn't mean to take over that. I'll I'll, I'll uh, hand it back to you. <laughs> no, I was I was going right along with you yeah I, you know i i don't know where i was going with that but i think i think i just got <laughs> us off track <laughs> well that's okay i i i uh that that was actually the last viewer question anyway um but uh i guess for the audience again if you want to if you want the chance to send in uh questions to future guests you can do so at the sharpening report facebook group which you can find at facebook or just go to uh, sharpeningreport.com and find it linked there um well if if people want to find out more about you or check out your videos uh where, where can they go yeah uh just look up white rabbit on youtube or black rabbit on youtube you can also go to youtube.com slash white rabbit official but you have to spell official with a zero for the o um just just search white rabbit that'll be easy <laughs> <laughs> good deal well i know we talked about a lot of different things here um if you had to wrap up all of what we talked about into one final thought what would you want the audience most to take away from from this episode i would say fluidity i like the uh, you can't be too rigid in what you believe. You have to continue researching and continue pushing yourself. Um, that's that's kind of one thing that I kind of get into with the arguing with atheist thing. And uh, I also actually got into it with my propaganda video that I just recently put out uh, a few weeks ago where I was talking about how propaganda works type of thing and basing um, or forming people's beliefs and perspectives on emotion. You know, uh, a lot of people get set in believing a certain thing and they invest a lot of thought and a lot of time and, and emotion into their beliefs. And if somebody comes along and threatens that belief, they get very defensive. You know, they get a heightened sense of emotion, whether it be anger or stress or whatever. Um, and that's a good indication that maybe you're clinging on to something that you're not supporting entirely with logic but instead um you know emotion so i would urge people to push that barrier i would encourage people to go out and find information that contradicts what they previously believed because that is how you really get to the truth. You have to continue researching, you have to continue pushing yourself, and you have to form your beliefs based on logic and reason, not based on strictly, you know, uh, the first thing you come across. Now, the one caveat I would say to that is when it comes to scripture. Obviously, Everything that I research is put into the my perspective, which is scripture contains all truth. 
period. You know, that's how I viewed things. But having said that, I came to that conclusion based on logic and reason, you know, um, with a lot of research into the accounts of the res resurrection, for example, that was a big one for me. Um, you know, very, just various things like that. Uh, I think there's a lot of misconception out there in re revolving around scripture and how scripture should be interpreted and supposed contradictions in scripture and things like that, that are all just horribly based on just faulty information. It makes me think of the zeitgeist uh, narrative, how, you know, they, they try and they tr they try and show all these correlations, supposed correlations between Jesus and all these other deities, but when you look into it a little bit closer, it's obviously not the case. It's obviously, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is base your logic and reason on logic and reason. Continue to research and search for the truth, because if you honestly and diligently search for the truth, you will find it. And I think that's what's kind of so amusing to me as well, because so, people often comment on the fact that, you know, all these truthers on YouTube are Christian, you know. And the reason for that is because if you're honestly pursuing the truth, sooner or later, you're going to be a Christian. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, so... I guess that's what I would leave people with. Yeah. Amen. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. What a fantastic uh, note to end on. Uh, we are all out of time, but I want to thank you again so much for coming on the show. Th this has been this has been phenomenal. What a, what, what a great interview. Um, we'll, we'll definitely have to have you back on again sometime. Well, thanks, man. I, you know, I, I really appreciate coming on. I don't typically do interviews. I'm not the best uh, at thinking on my feet. I like to usually plan things out a little bit more before I talk. You'll notice that my videos are heavily edited <laughs> for that purpose. <laughs> um, but I've, I've been a big fan of yours for a while. I've, I've been a subscriber of yours and listened to your content since you had probably about a thousand subs, I, I think is when I first stumbled upon your channel. So it's been absolutely, um, your work has been an absolute blessing um, and you've exposed me to a lot of uh, fellow researchers and a lot of information that has really spurred on a lot of my own research, which uh, I'm incredibly indebted to you for. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm just excited to see where your where your channel and and where your success goes from here. Well, thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate that. That really means a lot to me. And uh, uh, you know, like I've told you before, I've been a fan of your videos for for quite a while too. And uh, <laughs> that 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 actually was a pretty cool experience for me when we when uh, you first reached out to me and uh, you said that you were a fan of my stuff because I was thinking like I I, I just wouldn't have saw I wouldn't have saw that coming. You know, but <laughs> um, but uh, that that's that's amazing. And uh, honestly, the honor is all mine. This is uh, this has been great. Uh, well, hang on the line. I'll uh, I'll close this out here. That again for the audience was uh. Well, John Smith on Facebook, but you probably know him more as uh, White Rabbit on, on YouTube. Make sure to check out his videos. There's a lot of really good, uh, valuable information, and it's it's entertaining as well. It's it's easy to watch. It, nothing's going to be over your head, but you're really going to be able to get a lot out of it. So uh, I highly recommend uh, his his both of his channels, White Rabbit and Black Rabbit. Uh, if you would like to find more episodes of The Sharpening Report, you can do so at sharpeningreport.com and my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash... Josh Peck Disclosure. Also, if you care to help support the show and the ministry, you can do so at sharpeningreport.com. Your donations go to the everyday running of the ministry and help bring you more episodes of the Sharpening Report, as well as more books and other materials. And I'll say, as I do in every episode, only donate. Please only donate if you feel God leading you to do so. If you're not sure or if you don't feel led, that is totally fine. It's not an obligation. You can always pray for us. Uh, we can always use more prayer. We're not 501c3, so your donations are not tax deductible, and I'll never be the kind of person that's going to promise extra blessings from God or a miraculous tenfold return on your money or anything like that. We're not in the business of making promises for God, but what I can promise is that your help, be it prayer or financial, it's greatly appreciated, it keeps us going, and is the only reason we're able to continue doing what we do. All right, so all of that being said, we are all out of time, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Sharpening Report. I am your host. Josh Peck, and as always, take care and God bless.